It's not about motivation. When is need discipline? Wake up and win today. <laughs> discipline comes from within. To, to get over that and, and get going again. At first, I was a little bit depressed for the first day or so. But afterwards, like all things in life, um, I realized God's timing is impeccable, perfect. It's not late, it's not early, but it's bang on time. So it wasn't my time to fight for the championship then, but it is going to be my time on May the 18th. So um, I'm really preparing fantastic for it. Well, let's bring in Frank, uh, Frank Warren. A historic moment on May 18th in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This is going to be quite the event, and uh, this man looks ready to go here. He does, and uh, I want to echo as well. Our thanks to His Royal, Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, uh, His Excellency, Turkey Al Sheikh, uh, and all the team who've made this happen, and all the team here at the table who've made it happen. And, um, it will happen on the 18th. We've got the biggest fight of the 21st century taking place. It's never happened before. Four belts on the line. Um, and we're going to find out who the best heavyweight in the world is. I've got my views, and I know my views are going to be right. But it's going to be something special, something extra, extra special. And these things come along, you know, once, well, certainly in this case, on this occasion, once in a century up to as yet. So a special fight with two special undefeated fighters, two undefeated fighters, and uh, the world is going to see who is the best. I'm the best. I'm just defending my bestness against him. <laughs> the, the, linear, the lineal champion, the lineal champion and WBC champion fighting for the other three belts. And, uh, and you know what, Frank? Yeah, I read a lot of comments, people saying, oh, there's four belts. Let's just get this one clear right now. There's a lot more than four belts on the line. You got... IBO, IBF, WBO, WBA, WBC, Ring Magazine, and Lineal. So for all you motherfuckers out there who thought it was four, correction, it's seven. There's seven things on the line here in this historic event. You're wrong. No, I'm not. It's eight. Because there is the eight. Oh, the real season belt. Yeah, you've corrected. I stand corrected. I was one. Eight. Right. So it's eight belts in one fight. That's got to be a record. Yeah, it has, without a doubt. For you sure. You have to get another cabinet, you know. I'm going to have to, for sure. Let's bring in Spencer Brown. You've uh, you've been all, all around the country with Tyson Fury in terms of the tours that you used to do, the speaking tours, and now you're his manager as well. This next stage of his career, what are you seeing from this man heading into this fight? I'm seeing a man who's uh, on a mission. He's he's never looked so good in the last couple of years, and what I'm hearing from the camera, I'm not there every day to watch everything and to see everything, but everybody's telling me he's in fantastic shape, great order. You know, he's brought his dad in, and it's very important to have your family around him. I think he'll agree with that. Um, the sugar, it's very good buzz about the camp, which is fantastic. Well, let's ask Sugar Hill on this. I mean, you are with Tyson Fury all the time now as well. Since the cut, how, how have things been? Have you had to kind of calm down a bit on, on the sparring? Like, how, how does it work? Do you, do you readdress everything? Uh for me, um, it's just watching him day to day. He hasn't really let down since the end of the last training camp before the cut. And uh, I guess pretty much for me, one of the hardest things is watching out for uh, these kind of camps when the fighter is totally ready uh, to go and just kind of pacing him to keep him ready and not overdoing it. So um, it's not that difficult, but you just have to watch. You just have to watch the fighter. The fighter will tell you everything if you watch him. And how does he compare at this point to what he did leading up to the Francis Ngannou fight? Uh, you know what? I believe the Francis Ngannou fight was just um, him having so much time off and uh, not being mentally like focused as he is for this one here. Um, you know, he was still ready for the fight. It's just a different mentality when you go in there with, uh, at this level for everything, something that he's been waiting for for so long. Um, you know, you, 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 I don't want to say you dream of these things, but these are the things that actually can drive you to be a better person and to bring out your best. Uh, Spencer, and this is a question for everyone, really. Were you surprised with some of the comments that came from the USIC camp? I think Alex Krasik was actually advising you, Tyson, to, to retire as well. Did this cause surprise? Well, he would say that, wouldn't he? Because it's, it's, they've got a mountain to climb to get through and a mountain to, to chip away at. And it's not going to be easy for them at all. 
they've played the game. They've, you know, we've had a few comments from them in the past. Um, Tyson very quickly and very swiftly dealt with that. And I think when he cut his eye, we dealt with it very well, very quickly. We all spoke and, and, and got, the date, got the date done. So there was, there was nothing too much to moan about. But, um, yeah, he's got to go through a mountain, uh, Usyk. And I wouldn't like to face this mountain, that's for sure. Well, Tyson, what, at the launch press conference where you uh, faced off with Alexander Usyk, he didn't say a lot at that press conference. Do you think that's him holding back or he doesn't want to get involved? What is it? He doesn't speak English, for one. So he speaks a little bit of English, but it's very difficult to speak to a encyclopedia in boxing who speaks fluent English when you speak broken English. So I don't think you're ever going to get... You get a foreigner sitting up here with me. You get any American, any British fighter I've ever fought in nearly 20 years as boxing, no one has ever competed with me on speaking. So especially not some foreign man who speaks broken English. Um, as for all the stuff people, the camp said and all that, you know, this is show business, this is entertainment, this is everything. So if they don't talk about what's going on, then people lose interest and yada, yada, yada. So they've got to talk shit. It's a must. If you don't talk smack in this game, you ain't going to make it. There's a heavyweight in here, yeah, who's on his rise. And my advice to him is talk tons of smack the whole way. That's how people notice you. And then when they notice you, then you can show them your skills and do what you got to do. And that's how it's done. And as for like all of Usex's team, they're all lovely, decent people, I think. I saw his manager at uh, over in Saudi recently. I was just having a bit of fun with him. And, but I've shook his hand and uh, he's a nice fellow, you know. He's doing the best he can for his man. Um, which, you know, Frank, Spencer, all my team are doing the best they can for their man. So, And if you don't do the best for your man, then you're a pretty shit manager or promoter. That's what I'd say. Um, but as for, like, I've seen some stuff in the media, like this is really personal between me and Alexander Usyk. This is not, it's not personal. It's strictly business for both fighters, you know. Um, there's a lot, lot of stuff on the line and all that, but I don't hate him. He don't hate me. He's, he's, a, he's a good good husband, good God-fearing man, so I respect him as a man, as a fighter. He's undisputed um, cruiserweight champion. He's unified heavyweight champion, so anyone would have to respect the man's achievements. Um, good fighter, you know. I've got a, a tough challenge in front of me, but I, I'm very confident in my ability, and I'm very confident that I'll beat the guy. But that's not to say he's shit just because he loses to me. Like, you know, everybody I ever beat before, even long reigning lineal champions like Vladimir Klitschko, after I beat him, everyone said, oh, he's a piece of shit, him. Wilder, all of these guys who I ever beat, they were all shit after I beat them. So please don't say that Alexander Rusek shit after I beat him because he's not. He's a, he's a unified heavyweight champion, undisputed cruiserweight champion. But my personal opinion is of it is we have right weight divisions for a reason and me being an encyclopedia on boxing and I've studied every heavyweight cruiserweight that's ever lived um, when the cruiserweights step up to the big boys usually they get found wanting and even the greatest cruiserweights that's ever lived Evander Holyfield when he stepped up to the big boys in Big Daddy Bowl and it's Lewis he was found wanting you can, you can beat the average big ones but you can't beat the elite big ones because size really matters and we have weight divisions for a reason and he's going to be found wanting when he fights me on May the 18th. Um, even if you look at David Hay, he was an explosive, uh, good cruiserweight and good heavyweight. And when he fought average heavyweights, he could beat them. But when he stepped up to the big boy in Klitschko, it wasn't really a contest. We look at Thomas Adamek. He was a good light heavyweight, good cruiserweight. He beat some good average heavyweights, good world contender heavyweights, stepped up to the big boys, beat. So I expect the same from um, Alexander, to be fair. Who was the other one? Um, Sultan Ibragimov. He was Olympic silver medalist. He was 20-0. He, he was world... Uh, I think he beat Shannon Briggs for the world championship. And he, he was found wanting against Vladimir Klitschko at Madison Square Garden. So I could just keep going on and on and on and on. Let's use Johnny Nelson, for instance. Johnny was very... He was an undefeated cruiserweight when he was cruiserweight. But every time he stepped up heavyweight, he got bashed. So there is... Oh, it's facts. It's facts. I'm not, I'm not slagging anybody off, but what I'm saying is, these are facts. And if anybody wants to go check my boxing history, go do it. I've studied this game all my life, and you cannot prove it wrong. This is my time, my destiny, my era, and my generation. Facts.
Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit of tactics. Let's bring in Sugar Hill here. Sugar, from, from your perspective, the other heavyweights who have tried to beat Oleksandr Usyk, Daniel Dubois, Anthony Joshua, Derek Chisora, Chaz Witherspoon, all of these guys... Limited ability. But what did they do limited. wrong? Limited. What did they limited do wrong? Ability. They tried the best with their own ability, but it's very limited and Sugar will take over. <laughs> There's not really much for me to say with Tyson, uh, you know, knowing it all. So, uh, no, but just listen, Alexander Usyk, like Tyson said, is a great champion. Cruiserweight, he's won all these fights in his life. Um, and a lot of it is due to, you know, his athleticism and things of that nature, but he can think. So he's, out, he's able to outthink these guys, whereas they may come in and think one or two things, he's thinking three and four. So, uh, and, you know, Tyson is the same way. Tyson's thinking five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So uh, it's, it's, it's one of those chess matches. But I definitely agree with Tyson. He's the bigger man, um, the bigger skilled man. And you have a smaller man with those same skills. Or, um, yeah, we just say with the same skills. <laughs> and uh, that, that big man that big man's going to win all day, you know. And, yeah. And, and also, <laughs> look, everybody underestimates Tyson's punching power. Everybody, I don't understand why. I mean, I don't know about everybody. Wilder don't, does well, he? Doesn't. <laughs> no, but I'm talking about you talk about a lot of people, and they just don't seem to understand it. I mean, and you're right. Everybody who does get stepped in the ring, they find out about it. There's no doubt about that. And I think that's going to be a, another telling point in this fight, a big telling point for him. I've got a fun fact. Everybody who was supposed to be a non-puncher in my career has given me trouble. And everybody who was supposed to be a dynamite puncher have been all right against. So I better fucking watch me boots. I don't hear. Because he's noted as a total non-puncher. But I've been put over by a few non-punchers, Dad, haven't I? Noted non-punchers have put me over before. But the big ones, the big punchers in history, I've, I've been found wanting to keep me nailed down. So that's a little bit of a fun fact for everybody. That's a fact. That's a fact. And he's, he's, he's definitely a tough man, isn't he? Big puncher, weak jaw. Don't take it as well. Yeah. No. Well, Big John's suggesting that Usyk has potentially a weak jaw. Uh, Frank? No. no. You need to get your backs right, Tim. <laughs> 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 I'll cast iron jaw. Yeah. 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 There's been loads of them, haven't there? Been loads. And I, I, I put that too. They're putting that much effort into knocking someone out. Rah! Leave the self open to a counter. Crack. Where the man who don't punch as much is, is using his boxing and moving and he's not leaving himself wide open to get knocked out. Exactly. Frank, you've talked about an Achilles heel for Alexander Usyk as well. Do you want to tell us more about that? Oh, I've, I mean, I've, looked at, uh, I've sort of looked at a lot of these fights going back to the amateur days. And he is a bit of a crybaby when it comes to getting caught to the body. He cries to the referee a lot. And for me, that, was a, that always was, uh, if you want to use the phrase, an Achilles heel or an Achilles body. That's what it, what it is. And he doesn't like it. Factual, that is, as well. Yeah, because he, the only time he's been put over is with body shots. Yeah. Better be have dropped him with a yeah, body shot. Yeah. And um, I think it was the Polish guy. What was the Polish cruiserweight called? Um, was he called Goblacki or something Lewinsky. like that? Something like that. I think he dropped him with a yeah. body shot as well. Yeah. So Frank's and, definitely correct there. And I've, I've sort of looked at that, and I looked at that before we before we made the fight with Dubois, and Dubois, Dubois definitely hurt him to the body, irrespective of what went on. He doesn't like it to the body, that's for sure. And for me, the biggest exponent of exploiting a boxer's weakness is the professor here, and that's what he does. He, he finds that he's... If anybody's going to exploit it, it'll be Tyson. He's got he's got the mental capacity to do that and keep doing what he has to do. And and, and I I know uh, you know people have asked about predictions. That I genuinely genuinely believe that Tyson will win this fight in an explosive style. And is that is that because we talked about size earlier as well? Is that because he's going to be so much bigger? Can you give us a bit more colour oh, on the I, prediction? I, I think he is. I mean, you only got to look at look at both of them. He is bigger, but the other guy, he's been heavyweight what now for three years, uh -huh. so he's grown into that. He, he's grown into it. He's carrying the weight, and obviously, you know, if you're struggling at cruiser weight, he's going to be more comfortable. But he's dealing with somebody as Tyson said himself, he's natural. 
He's a naturally big guy. He's a, he's a he's he's like in some ways like um, like Usyk that they got good very good good boxing brains. But I just think Tyson is he is the best heavyweight in the world. There's no doubt about that. And everyone's going to talk about the last fight. Good fighters on an off night win fights. They don't see it. He's not sitting here today saying it was an off night and that's why I got beat. He had an off night and he won. And that's what good fighters do. They come through it. And he come through it and he is, and he is, he is in my opinion, in my lifetime in boxing, and I, since I've been doing this, he's been the best at it. He's been, he's been involved in the best heavyweight fight I've ever seen live, which was that third fight. Without fight that. Yeah. And now you know, against um, Wilder. By the way, Wilder was undefeated heavyweight champion for six years and the biggest puncher and you gain you look at his boxing brain Tyson's boxing brain that second fight worked it out what he needed to do and absolutely done a job and that's what he does he's such a that's why he's such a intelligent good super good fighter and I genuinely do believe I believe this other fella by the way he's, he's not you know he's no he's, he's not gonna he's not just showing up he's, he's probably Stills in his heart, he may have seen a couple of flaws in Tyson's last performance, and he'd be working on that, no doubt about it, like any fighter would do. But at the end of the day, he's in with somebody who is extra special, and I think we're going to see a, I think we're going to see an explosive, extra special fight. Well, Tyson, we know when it comes to critics, you don't listen. It's water off a duck's back. But I want to bring in Spencer here because you're you're having to see people criticise Tyson Fury, say some outrageous stuff out there as well. Yeah, I mean, how do you take to that? It's uh, when you're personally involved with somebody, it's a bit upsetting, and it can get really on your nerves. And uh, but like Tyson says to me, just ignore it. It's water off a duck's back. But I mean, I watched yesterday. I watched. I don't know, 20 or 30 different people with different opinions. This fight is causing, is causing massive, ma massive different opinions for everybody. It's, um, it's going to be so, so much of a spectacular... What they've got planned for this fight is the fight, but we've got a great undercard. It's, it's going to be spectacular. And, I mean, they've even brought the, uh, their own song out today, yeah. the Ring of Fire song. So if, if, you're, if you're on the internet, have a look at it. It's unbelievable. They're pushing all the boats out for this, for this fight. It will be tremendous, fantastic, stupendous. It will be unbelievable. And Turkey Al Sheikh and his team have done such a good job. And uh, they, they do really think a lot of Tyson. They love him. So, um, no doubt about that. Honestly, no you know, the relationship he's got with Turkey Al Sheikh is second to none. You know, he was the first one through the door and he'll probably be the last one out the door. So, you know, the, 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 there's, a, there's a line that they want to follow, and there's, there's, you know, they want to get more fights to come. And uh, Tyson's mentioned them, but we go one fight at a time. Uh, I think Alexander Usyk might have um, underestimated Tyson a little bit on, on that last performance. But if, if you see him in the gym, his punch power, everything's gone up. He looks, he looks out of this world. He really does. Fantastic shape. Um, his head's, he's very focused on this fight, which I've noticed a lot, really focused. So we'll see on the night, and uh, we'll see who wins, and uh, we'll see what everybody's got to say then. All the, uh, all the great uh, boxers and pundits and all these people who are... What I've seen, you know, a lot of them don't give Tyson a chance. I don't know where they're coming from on that past performance, on that last performance. But let's see. Let's see what they've got to say after this. Hopefully I get chinned in around then, eh? <laughs> yeah. Well, they that's what they're on. saying. You know, that's what they're all... You know, some of them are, are quite amazed. But uh, let's see afterwards. And uh, like Tyson said, it's a boxing match. The best man will win, and we'll shake hands afterwards. I think if I didn't train at all for this camp... I just come in at like 25 stone and sank maybe 15 pints of peroni <laughs> beforehand. And the next day, going there, what's he going to do? Jib and jab me around? Do you know what I mean? He, listen, take nothing away with him, but he couldn't do anything with Derek Chisora. We all saw that fight. Let's Correct. not be eluded with him. Yeah. He, it was a 50-50 fight. Got to run either way. So late, not unless he's come on yeah. at 38, 39 year old in the last over two years, like leaps and bounds. Oh, I, I, I thought the Joshua fight this was very close as well. I, I, so. I thought the Joshua fights were very close. He came out with a lot of marks and, and uh, you know, 
Um, the uh, second fight, what, the second? The second fight especially, yeah. yeah. So, but, uh, and the other thing is, you're saying 15 Peronis, you're on the Furiosity now. Yeah, so but there's no alcohol in that, uh, uh, Frank. Got no chance. So if I'm going in for a real ding-dong, I need at least 15 pints of Peroni. <laughs> at least. Tyson, I was watching an interview with Alexander Usyk the other day, and he said that Vladimir Klitschko has reached out and given him some advice. But the well, advice... that'd be anti advice. How to lose the Gypsy King? <laughs> <laughs> How can Vlad, my old pal Vlad, give anybody any advice? Because he would have used it himself only if he had any advice or any idea how to beat me. It was a, um, an absolute one-sided boxing lesson I give to old Vlad. Yeah. And I believe Vlad was a, um, a very good, good champion, just like this guy is. Best of his generation. And I said, didn't I? I said, if I can't beat old Vlad, I must be useless. And I'll say it again. If I can't beat Usyk, I'm no good, clearly. That's, that's, that's your headline. If Tyson Fury can't beat Usyk, Tyson's no good. End of. I'm not going to pull any punches. It is what it is. If I can't beat Usyk, I'm no good. Say I'm no good. And then I'll get a rematch of him and say I'm no good again if I lose again. <laughs> what more is there to do? But if I beat him, I beat another man. Great. Fantastic. On to the next one. But if you do beat him, you get all those belts you talked about, the eight belts, the undisputed. What will that mean? Yeah, to I'll add them to the 25 I've already got, shall I? I've actually promised His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh that when I win all these belts, I give every one to him as a present. Let's get a final predictions from... Uh, I mean, look, everyone's going to pick Tyson Fury to win, but give us a bit of colour on it. Sugar Hill, how's this fight going to play out? Knock out. Simple. Yeah. It is. Early, late? Don't know. Okay. Just when it happens, knock out. May 18th, we'll find out. Uh, Spencer? Knock out. Okay. Eight. Within eight. Okay, we've got a round out of Spencer. Let's see yeah. if we'll get a round out of Frank Warren. You should ask your, I think you should ask his dad as well. We'll bring in Big John Fury. Frank, yeah. let me just get, get it from yourself first. Knock out. Knock out. You're going to give me a round like? When he catches him. <laughs> He'll go. Big John, what do you think? Chess match. It's going to be a boxing match between two great technicians. Could end up a bit of a boring fight to watch because that's what they do. And I think Tyson. Buy <laughs> 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 yeah. your tickets here. Yeah, get your tickets here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We've we'll reduced the tickets now, so. <laughs> Buy one, get one free. You've got a land that big push. You know what I'm saying? You sit here with a gun and don't aim it. You're not going to hit anything. Okay? So what I'm saying is, it will be a great boxing match between two top technicians and Tyson being the bigger man. I reckon I'll see him being stopped around about 10 or 11 rounds. But before that, a great, great, masterful boxing match where both men get the tag, both men probably get the head. What it's going to come down to is what we thrive on, and that's what's between his legs at the end of it. And I don't think no man can master what he has down there. He'll pull it up and he'll find the win in an exciting boxing chess match fight. But there will be some thrilling moments. Thank you, John. Thank you very much, John. And I'm going to go for Usak to knock me out in the first round. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm going to go for it. Why not? You go. We've got everyone's predictions, including Tyson's very curious prediction there. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're going to do some photos down the front and win gold now. IPMB is giving away five 24 karat gold coins to our token holders worth over two thousand dollars each. Let's do this. <laughs> thank you very much for this uh, great news. It's amazing. It's never been easier to own gold, so join the raffle now. I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals.